Web Security for Joomla CMS, but it's not just Joomla CMS because security is more, more than what you do for your Joomla CMS. Um, I'm Chris Nielsen. My, my company is CMP Integrations, and we partner with a company called Secure Live, which I'll tell you a little bit about. And the presenter that was planned to come was the inventor of this great software. And I'm combing Phil today, <laughs> um, kind of pinch hitting. Uh, Phil Cooper is here, and he was, you gave the presentation on uh, security last year. So I don't consider myself a security expert, um, but I'm kind of more of an incident manager. I spent um, several years working for the DOD, the government contractor, and got a pretty good taste of physical security, which is one of the important things that you want to think about your, uh, your passwords, um, your uh, relationships with your employees and, and competitors and how what information they may have access to and how that affects your whole entire security strategy. Um, and then with CMP we've had a history of different hosting environments that we've managed and I have ended up being the CTO for most of the, the duration of that so I get to be the incident manager, the guy that they wake up at 3 in the morning when something goes wrong and then I sort out who you know, what smart people do we apply to a particular problem to sort it out? So we're gonna um, we're gonna talk a little bit today about some security threats. Uh, we're not gonna get in uh, too deep with um, with you know how to how to you know uh, look at your your logs and some of the some of the more technical things. We're gonna kind of stay at a high level. However, we are gonna follow up uh, with two security experts, uh, Jeff Brown. Who, would have been here for this uh, if, if he could have, and uh, and probably one of the most uh, prolific authors on the topic, especially as it relates to CMS and, and open source, Tom Canavan. So if you sign up for uh, the web security webinar, which is next Thursday at one o'clock, and I'll have some information. You can stop by my booth. I'll, I'll get you, uh, you know, a, a way to get to that and have the the, uh, the link up here. Um, we'll be giving a book away for everyone that shows up to that webinar. It's very important. This is an incredible handbook. I'm not, you know, trying to over pitch this book, but this is there, there's an incredible resource here. I'm going to give away a couple books today to whoever asks the, the, the most provocative question or tells the most interesting story about uh, web security. Um, so I'll get into a couple. Uh, case studies, hopefully one that will scare the heck out of you, as it scared me. Um, uh, we're um, going to mostly try to get into sharing some of your stories once I get through following through some of the, the, the PowerPoint. Web uh, hackers have, I can give you a couple quick statistics. Hackers have, or hacking, or cybercrime, I should rephrase that. Cybercrime has increased 7,000% over the past six years. I think that's a huge number. I mean, they're, they're getting in uh, everywhere. Everyone's a target. Um, and it's the, the most um, compelling statistic out of this that I, I go back to about 70% of competitors and disgruntled employees make up your, uh, your cyber attacks. So that, that tells you, okay, a, a disgruntled employee, maybe they have some, they have a certain amount of information that they can get in to, uh, you know, uh, to access. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you forget to change their FTP password, they can get in and surprise. Um, competitors, I don't necessarily know how, you know, well, why wouldn't a competitor be pretty motivated to, to, to access your information or to, to to perhaps see you ill will. I don't like to go after people, but you know, that, that, that just scared me. Okay. How many folks have been hacked? <laughs> what kind of hack? Uh, give me some some ideas. What, what happened? Did you see a penguin on your site? Turk. What's that? Turk. Kosovo. Okay. In the damp site. Oh, okay. <laughs> Turk TV. Okay. I was masquerading as a um, Latin America bank. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of might got hacked. My uh, only WordPress site, so uh, 
Um, and I have a, she didn't want to pay for updates, but yeah, it became a uh, city bank mission site. So nice. The one that sold Viagra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> European bank, that okay. legitimate bank that was they were using it for fishing. Yeah. We had a site that got hacked that um, they stole, the, the popular thing is Google Juice, okay? So you go and search and here it shows up their website. Well, the link was actually taking him over to buy my anger or some, some crazy thing. And, and when Jeff went in to, to, uh, to clean the site out, um, he said, well, you know, I figured that the amount of time that they've done that, the amount of this, they probably made about a million and a half off of that. I'm like, <laughs> but anyway, so it's 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 a uh, scary water out there. Well, what you know, so you know what a, what a hacker is going to want to do. They're going to want to take your Google juice. They're going to want to post uh, get, you know post embarrassing links and spam. Spam seems to be a big one. We just kind of got beat up on that. Um, and uh, and and ISPs, you know, they kind of hold you accountable. So you're, you have, if you leave your site um, unattended and they hack into your, uh, your, through your site and other information is compromised, you're liable and, um, and they'll make you go away. You take, they'll take your site completely offline. Um, everybody's vulnerable. Some people think, oh, I'm just a little church or a little small group. And uh, the reality is that, okay, there's a lot of big sites up here, AT&T, yeah, maybe it would be worthwhile to go and spend these hours, midnight being a hacker, kind of figuring out how to get into stuff because they're big fish. But the way they get to the big fish, when you go fishing, what do you, what do you use for bait? Oh, minnows, little fish. So they really, they really go after the, the little fish and then they'll use your computer or your website as the vehicle to get in and uh, be naughty. Um, uh, before I, I came over, I asked, uh, Jeff had shown me at different times some, some resource sites. What, what the, you know, when a new hack comes out, they, they broadcast it, it becomes like a little ground spell. Oh cool, some new toys, I can go in and uh, you know, do some crazy things with it. And then they go and have a heyday. So some of the places like Exploits, Download, uh, Packet Storm Security, and so forth, these are some of the sites, and there's, there's plenty of them if you Google and look around. Um, there's a ton of sites out there where the, the hacker community uh, share scripts, and, uh, and, uh, and then they, they, they build on them, kind of like open source. It's, uh, uh, Joomla is built through a, a positive group of folks uh, contributing to the cause of creating this great software, well, hackers have the negative version of that in their own community. Um, a couple of things, I don't want to just, you know, say Secure Live is the only solution, um, because Open Source Excellence has, a, has a, great, uh, a great tool suite that does something very similar to what Secure Live does. Um, Akiba Admin <coughs> Tools is another great uh, tool for, you know, whitelisting and, and blacklisting and controlling the IPs and seeing, seeing uh, reports and monitoring uh, the traffic um, that's, that's coming into your, to your site. Um, I did have a handout. I, 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 I brought one copy with me, but I, I, can, uh, I can get you um, copies you can come over to, uh, to my table uh, over here in the other, the other building. Um, and, and we kind of, Tom Canavan went through and kind of gave me a description of each of these, uh, what, they, what they really mean. Some of you may know what they mean, but these are the top 10 uh, vulnerabilities that are out there right now, and really the percentage of websites that uh, have been uh, affected or uh, connected or uh, have, have these attacks uh, happen to them. So, like, uh, Cross-site scripting is uh, probably the big scary one. Uh, it's the most popular. Um, what that is is it, 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 it's it's kind of it's, it's code injections. So either via, via a vulnerability in your CSS or in uh, you know a, a form or some other some other uh, code that you have in your website, somebody's able to get in and let's say I'll just kind of follow 
through kind of a, a real world example. Um, so somebody get they, they get a little uh, a little script in that allows them to find your password. So then they get into the admin of your website. They get into the admin of your website, then they're able to put in another script that maybe then allows them to get in to put something into the run. Okay, you know, in Joomla you can install a variety of like uh, uh, Explorer and some, there's some other tools that allow you to uh, get to the root, kind of like its own FTP. Some people even have uh, a PHP admin uh, module in, in their site. And those, those things can be really scary because that's to say, here, open door. <laughs> uh, they're very useful as a developer. Uh, we work with developers that don't, uh, that, you know, perhaps were asleep they're working in, in the evening, they need to install a, a tool like that to work to work in the site, and it's very important that you kind of pull those things out so that you know they're useful for getting in to the back end when you need to, but don't leave them up there for other people if they happen to get through kind of your first barrier. So they get in and they put a little script in the book of your, of your website. Okay, well what can they do with that? They can they can use that script to put in what would be called a shell script. Okay, so the shell script gets down into the underbelly of the server, and then from the underbelly of the server, then they're able to get into the, perhaps other uh, accounts and other websites that are on your server. Well, imagine this on a cloud environment. Okay, scalable server farms, tons of uh, websites out there, and this actually happened. Um, a, a, a client of ours had a script put on their, on their site. They actually got through, um, through a vulnerability in their, uh, uh, in, their, in their template, and it was a former client, actually, and before <laughs> they got hacked. <laughs> actually, we, th this particular story that I, I'm, I'm about to get to, um, I used to make it an option for people, you know, get secure life, it's 20 bucks a month, not a big deal, uh, you know, to take care of your security. Um, but they were hosting with us, and, uh, and then they, they were, I guess, technically a client because they were a hosting client, but they weren't a, a development client anymore. And hadn't heard from them for a while, and then all of a sudden they get hacked. And, uh, and then I, I say, well, go talk to, to Jeff, get secure live. And, and Jeff goes through and he finds out how they got in, what they did, and everything. So what they had done is they got a shell script in there that would have allowed them. Now, we caught it before this happened. But think of the magnitude of this. They got in and they were able to have kind of carte blanche to anything on the entire cloud. So they could take any password. They could take any credit card information. I don't know who else is on the cloud with that particular. It scared the heck out of me. And rightly so. I made it mandatory. We created a kind of our own hosting platform where we integrated it with Secure Live and, uh, and we partnered with Rackspace to, to, to build this, uh, this new environment. So that uh, it, we won't host you unless you use Secure Live. Now, other people, you know, you can use other tools. It's not the only tool. Uh, we're not the only platform, but make sure, and this is one of the big things that Tom talks about in his book, um, do you really know your host? Do you know where it's hosted? Do you know, you know, is it in a basement? Is it in, you know, what's the data center like? Um, there, uh, and then what kind of a plan do you have in place if something goes wrong? Um, kind of like, you know, if there's a, a natural disaster, you tell your kids or your wife or your family where you're going to have kind of a central place to meet. You have kind of a plan. Um, you need to have that in place as well. One of the scary things uh, about this, like a lot of these vulnerabilities come out, I don't monitor them every day. That's security guys, what they do. And this is one of the, one of the charts that Jeff provided. This is, the, this is the big number that makes me nervous. Okay, by the time that you know, something comes out, Oh, hey, we got a problem. Well, okay, so send some developers. They try to figure out what the solution is, put a patch in. By the time it gets all out to the software that's protecting your computer or uh, your website or whatever, 208 days. You're standing there with your pants down, and, and there's nothing available necessarily to, to protect you. Okay? 
that's not the case with every single vulnerability, but there are vulnerabilities that, that have, these are actually average statistics provided by uh, White Hat. Um, now, Joomla's getting better. This is an old uh, graphic that uh, Tom sent me uh, that kind of went through forum posts related to a uh, percentage of them being hacks and a percentage of them being other security posts. Now, I don't have the total number necessarily of posts uh, that were there, but that kind of says that half of them were, you know, uh, you know, a security issue, but but half of them were hacks. Okay. Well, I, I said, well, Tom, can I use that same kind of statistic about 50-50? He said, it's the numbers. It's really hard to track security statistics. I said, well, can you update this? He said, well, it took me about two weeks to go through the forum posts and figure this all out. I did it manually and did, you know, he had a day to help me out with this, so, so we couldn't do that. But he said the, the, the good news is that the 2.5, uh, you know, auto updates is really, start, we're starting to see a trend of, of, of this, these vulnerabilities going down, or at least in the, in the forum posts, okay? Because it's easier for people to upgrade. Now, some of the complex sites, and when you have custom uh, coding in there, it gets a lot more in the weeds. Uh, it's really challenging. I, yesterday, I gave a talk on my Puget Sound, and it's really tough because we have so many customizations of these programs. And, and the other social, uh, the children's hospital, they did the same thing. And, the, and then when they were asked, how are you going to stay up to date? Well, very carefully <laughs> was the answer. And, and it, 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 and. You just have to kind of be alert of the types of coding issues, and the, you know, are you going to go back and, and scan your code when you find out, uh, you know, something something new? Probably not. But if you if you stay alert and aware of the, the potential threats, that helps you, you know, uh, uh, mitigate those those kinds of things and prepare and plan and, and, and follow through with upgrades. But the good news is that the auto up updating is, uh, is, is a big plus and, and in the right direction for security for Joomla. Um, some people thought, well, oh, Joomla is more, uh, more secure than Drupal or WordPress. Um, not really. Uh, it's kind of across the board because security is not just about Joomla. It's, not, uh, it, it, it's about so many other factors. And, uh, you know, your hosting environment is a big piece of it, your physical security, um, how you uh, treat sensitive information. Uh, do you write your password on a sticky note, leave it on your desk, the secretary, the janitor comes in and, oh, they can get in. Um, so he, he looked up some statistics. Okay, so Drew Paul has a uh, sense of, uh, what is that, uh, that's March 2009. Um, Drupal has about 554 known vulnerabilities. WordPress has about 700. But that number is a little bit skewed because there's more actual installations uh, of that. So, so it's pretty much average. Uh, it's pretty much the same between all three platforms. And his comment was PHP is PHP is PHP. And that's actually uh, cut directly from the chat session from him. So, you know, PHP is, I think they've come up with a new uh, 5.3. Um, 5.2 had some, some vulnerabilities and that sort of thing. If you have a 1.5 site, you've probably been notified by your, your hosting provider that they're going to shut you down and uh, migrate to, to 5.3. And, uh, well, when, when they migrate to 5.3, Joomla 1.0 sites are compatible with PHP 5. But I guess there's a plugin we're looking into that. Or a patch, I guess. So again, what can we do? Um, number one, it's a free one. <laughs> or another tool that will protect you. When I think it was 2.5, was it 2.5.5 came out? And it was like, oh, it was scary if you don't. It was a pretty serious security <coughs> vulnerability, and everybody needed to, to upgrade um, immediately, um, uh, especially if you were in a 1.6 or a 1.7. It was like having a wide open door. I don't remember the exact um, uh, vulnerability. But the bottom line is, OK, all of a sudden I have to upgrade 35 sites like overnight, now that, now that we know about this, because it's being broadcast everywhere. Um, Secure Live had that vulnerability patched 
you know, beforehand. So they're sitting there at, kind of at the front door. The way this system works, and I assume that uh, some of the other systems work, is they, um, uh, well, some, some just kind of are, are local to your site, like a, a, a Kiba uh, admin tools. That's, they're, they're not connected to a network of other sites. Uh, a solution like Secure Live runs this huge database, and they, um, they monitor uh, globally anybody that has, that, that, uh, has Secure Live installed, and if somebody's tried to hack one of them, it, all, it will automatically block them on any of the other sites. So it's really kind of a global network. There's some other things, I think Cloudflare and some, some others have some similar types of security uh, solutions where they're really trying to tap into uh, almost, uh, what would be the word for that? Security sourcing? I mean, kind of like cloud sourcing? Uh, Honeypot. What's that? Honeypot. Honeypot, there's another one? Okay. Um, Anyways, um, keep, keep aware of uh, current security issues. Uh, use use a, a, some type of a, a software tool that will allow you to keep a handle on your logs and the other things that are going on. Forms is a big vulnerability. Uh, Jeff showed me a, in a quick second how he's able to hack into a site like that over a, over a contact form. Two seconds. One of the tricks that Tom does when he gives these kinds of uh, seminars is he says, okay, you got a phone or you got a, a laptop, he's got a laptop here, come over here and he hack into your machine in two minutes. I mean, the wizard. I don't have any magic tricks like that though. Um, so a lot of it, a lot of it's really common sense. Uh, some of what, you know, one of the things that we did with our, our hosting platform was really come up with some, a lot of custom code in the HD access file. Um, even though I think it's uh, Linux recommends you don't use it or some, something that Tom was saying, but uh, it, security experts are, are definitely uh, recommending that. So, uh, secure live blocks, scans, <coughs> alerts, and reports. Jeff meets with the FBI like once a week and uh, gets the inside scoop of who's doing what and then shares a lot of this information, the database and so forth, uh, uh, what they learn through, through the, these cyber attacks. And then they proactively, the FBI, not Jeff, go after the, the perpetrators. They, I didn't get, oh, I'm doing this from memory, um, and I, I think that the numbers have been updated, but I think they've shut down uh, about 1,500 known hacker sites. Um, they, the statistics are, are, are crazy, but they're, they're, they've really done a, a great job in the security community to contribute to uh, uh, against cybercrime. Um, if you use Secure Live, let, okay, first of all, uh, Jeff has offered a 15% discount on any security scanning. If you have a site that's squeaky clean, no, nothing, and you and you sign up for Secure Live, you get uh, uh, you and, and you if you get hacked, they'll clean it up for free. There's a couple other services. Uh, actually, Tina from SiteGround showed me one yesterday. There, cleanup services average around three, four hundred dollars. Uh, they charge the three ninety seven. The other one she showed me was like two eighty five. So you're looking at about that much, just real quick to get to scan and and, and clean up your mess, uh, plus whatever damage has been caused. Okay, whatever information's been. Uh, yes. Yeah, That's a question. Uh, oh. Okay. So so anyways. Um, it's good to be covered with a guarantee. Whatever whatever solution you're with, make sure. Yeah, I've used a lot of different general security tools. Um, I'm, I've used OIC Security Suite and I'm yeah. side testing Secure Lab right now. Um, but if you're not willing to pay for anything, um, SiteGround actually makes something called Jake Hackguard, which actually is it, it's pretty decent for what it is. Jake Hackguard? Yeah. Get that? It uh, turns off you know the uh, you know injections and a lot of the most common backdoors. Um, it used to be a pain because they always put their you know, advertisement on your footer, but they, you can now turn that off in the most recent version. So Excellent. if you're not willing to pay a penny, I put that on all my clients that you know, aren't going to pay for anything. But um, I try to at least get them to get something. So. Excellent. Uh, okay. Um, I pretty much went through the, uh, the, the, the case study, the scary uh, script story. Um, uh, again, don't use flash, that's insecure, just more than one reason. One of the things that we've done um, related to hosting 
is we have a lot of larger, larger customers. We created what we call a Joomla Lifeline program, which really leverages the idea of, of Secure Live. And you can, you can kind of do the same thing if you, if you are really good at buttoning down your, uh, your security. Um, but we can make a guarantee because of, because of our uh, integration with Secure Live that uh, we'll keep your site safe if it's a, a 1.5. Um, so the, the problem in, in, in the marketplace right now is that uh, if you have a site that you just built or uh, you know, you're know you just finishing up a 1.5 site and all of a sudden you're at 2.5 and they spent $40,000, $50,000 or more, do you think they want to spend that again to migrate uh, if you've got a whole bunch of components and everything, so you know some of our customers were ready to, you know, scream, go to Drupal or wherever else, which would be the same problem basically, but they weren't very happy about that. So the idea is that not every customer is going to be ready to go to 2.5. It's just not. It's going to be cost prohibitive. So you need to be thinking of, of how you can maybe just migrate them to 3.5 when it comes up, buy them a little bit of time. Uh, so, but I'm not recommending to not upgrade to 2.5, but we, we kind of put this solution together. You could probably do research and put your own kind of uh, solution together to do the same kind of thing. Uh, again, next Thursday, 1 o'clock, um, Tom Canavan is a, a, he's amazing, cool, got a great book. What time? Away, so 1 p.m. Eastern or Eastern? Central. Eastern Daylight Time. It hasn't changed yet. For your Lifeline program, are you committing to a set amount of support for that? It's a, uh, it's uh, $29.95 a month. Secure lives built in. You're basically hosting yeah. with us, mm -hmm. plus any kind of overage charges if you have a high volume site. Um, the, right. the service okay. charge. I'm trying to. The service that's evolved is really the, the guarantee. In that, if you do get hacked, we will clean that up. We're going to be there to safeguard and protect your site. And you know, from a, as as a businessman, it's kind of like, well, if if you host with us and you do this, hopefully you'll trust us in being a service partner to help you plan for 3.5. Okay, it, it, I'm not going to lie about that. It's it's really designed to help our our hosting business. But you can do the same thing. You know, you can. But do the research to make sure that you've got a secure, you know, bundle and people to call. I, I mean, I don't fix this stuff myself. I call the, I call the experts, and they're on our team. And uh, get yourself a, a team of folks that can respond quickly. It's part of your part of your plan. Um, I want to hear your stories. I think we can learn a lot from each other. So, uh, what? What were the greatest challenges that, that you're facing right now with security? Jump in and share your story. Uh, had a client that we were working on doing a migration to 2.5. Um, they were on a hosting provider, and the hosting provider basically uh, came in and said, okay, you know, your site's been hacked. You got to do something about it. You got to get up to the latest version of whatever. Um, so we did that, and then got them up to the latest version. And then all of a sudden, you know, a week later, it comes back in and it says, "Oh, wait a minute, you're still hacked," and takes it completely offline, no notice whatsoever. Just takes it offline. You know, the site's down. Nothing's going on. Frantic calls from clients at six in the morning. Um, basically, that's late. That's late. Yeah. <laughs> well, Easter time, yeah, is central, exactly. so they had just gotten in the office yeah. and they see their site's not working and they sell, they rent bicycles, so it can't be down because it's like a Friday and it can't be down. Mm -hmm. um, so they're sitting there like, okay, what, what do we do? And we start looking at, okay, what do we need to do to, to pull this stuff back and get things going? You know, and the owner of the company is freaking out and it's taking a lot longer to fix it this time than it did last time. Because the the hosting company just said, okay, fine, we'll just restore a site back up for you and get it back up and running. But what nobody realized, and we hadn't realized until later, is that because they weren't on the radar of the company, they didn't scan it when they first came in. Their, their security system didn't scan it. The site had actually been compromised for at least a year. 
Yep. And they transferred it over, and then when they got hacked again, then it was on their radar, then they scanned the whole site, then they found the other vulnerability. Yep. And they found this file on there, and unfortunately, they only had 30 days worth of backups. And that was on the hosting company. Yep. And you know, I went back to, to versions of the files that I had on my computer where we made backups when we were working on it, and it was still there. So we ended up having to effectively shortchange the migration, move it as it was, because we had nothing to go back to. You know, and that's, that's one of the horror stories. You don't have anything to go back to. You know, if you don't do the backups, and even if you do, you gotta make sure they're clean. You know, and, that, and our problem was they weren't, because we hadn't realized and had, didn't have something in there that was actually scanning the site, which means that, you know, even if you put Secure Live on your site now, you do you honestly it, know without scanning if it's clean? Yeah, you know, because right. it still could be could be compromised and you don't know it, and it's been that way for years. Yeah, they absolutely have to do that. And to take that a step further, okay, and that's what security scanning. I mean, start it now. I mean, go take a look. It, you, you're surprised at what you find. Uh, we've actually found, gone back and, and just done a kind of a routine scan and found stuff that that was missed. You know, they it, they weren't vulnerable because they were protected. But you go. Oh, hey, what's this? And the the story that I was telling you before with this scary, scary shell script, it was it was a brilliant script because it had this ability to sit there in stealth mode, like five directories into some other common name, commonly named directory. You never know where you never know where it is. It won't show up on the scanner. So the, the, the perpetrator could come in, hey, let's have a little fun. Okay, bye-bye, I'm gone. Won't show up in your logs. They, they just had, they did some brilliant things with that. I, I just, I'm, I'm an evangelist now. I'm scared to death. And as a guy that owns a company, that would have taken my whole company down. It would have shut down my whole platform. End of story. Um, we were, when we first started our business, uh, you know, we were using an unmanaged uh, system, and we were um, got a call, or we were, you know, had pinged them, and we were looking and started phone starting one. Great tool, by the way, pingdom.com. Mm -hmm. Pingdom.com. Your site goes offline, sends you a notice. Excellent. Yeah. So we're like, okay, you know, we're like, okay, it sometimes goes down five, ten minutes, not a big deal. After about twenty minutes, we're like, okay, something's going on. So I'm getting online and nothing's coming up. Not even the thing for the for the hosting company. We're like, what's going on? So we start going on uh, web hosting talk. Find out that uh, they were being attacked. The hosting company was being attacked. Their management software uh, had a vulnerability. And they were getting in and doing rm-rf slash uh, to the servers. And they had four data centers that was happening across uh, over a hundred thousand nodes that this was happening on, and it took weeks for them to clean everything up. And what they happened is, is they were not only getting into the servers, they were getting into the backup servers. It was actually a, a day zero like a vulnerability in Hypervm, and that was when like a FSCK. VPS and their whole network went down because like they they were able to actually get into the the software that controlled the, the VPS and everything. And from there they just started wiping servers. Well, not not nice not, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You invite them to the party. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Did everybody understand what what they were saying. Not everybody's a technical. Okay. Well, uh, VPN uh, the VPN is virtual. Yeah. Virtual you're private able, server, yeah. Right, you're able to get in, that's how the, the server admins get in to, to manage the tools and stuff and set everything up. So now we do not rely on a single um, provider because not even for backups. We have three redundant backups yeah. with different providers because uh, we found out that there was one provider who had a whole floor no power for a week. Yeah. And so that's your backups, if you rely on the backups for the data center. Well, I had a, uh, it was called A plus, uh, uh, yeah. A plus went down, they were down for two weeks. It was their pipeline. Their, uh, was it 
critique uh, at the what's a level three. I'm sorry, level three. And, and, well, the, the main pipeline coming in. Uh, they, I don't know, if they didn't something happened. They crashed. They ended up having to move their entire 3,000 servers from one side of the Arizona. 3,000 servers to another location. Unplug, physically go over to another place because they because their pipeline was the infrastructure was gone. They just couldn't get it. So imagine two weeks. I mean, those are the kinds of horror stories that and it, it, I don't know if it was related to security or whatever happened to them. But um, one other point that I want to go back again to the scary story, and then we're going to take you. The scary story is that if those hackers were able to get into this website. My clients, which affects me, okay. Who's to say that all these other websites out there on that same cloud, somebody couldn't get into one of them and they get into me? So one of the things that we did, and this goes back to HD access file, we put a whole bunch of you know uh, intense code in there once we you know analyzed what this was, so that hey, let them know they go crazy in the rest of the cloud. They're not getting into my my house. <laughs> so you know. It, it goes both ways, and, and, and especially in the cloud, it's really kind of a scary thing. It's, and it's a new space that people are discovering things. So, um, protect yourself. Uh, yeah, kind of funny security story, and then you know, um, a challenge real quick. The funny one is like uh, um, Mike Car um, Caravan, the the host here, also runs Duma Showroom. Um, you know, he Mike Carson. 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 Yes. Mike Carson. Um, Drew showroom, he, uh, me and him both got an account on the same host without knowing it. Um, within minutes of each other, we both bought SSL certificates. So I just migrated a huge client with a HIPAA application for yeah. the internet mm -hmm. into it, and I you know, bought a wildcard SSL, got it all installed, it was fine. I was convincing them for months this was the right move. Next day, all of a sudden, all the browsers are giving, this isn't the host you're looking for. My application was going to drewmoshowroom.com. <laughs> <laughs> Did Mike orchestrate that? <laughs> I was, well, I, I, took, I took his class last year and he, he always made a joke like he found a vulnerability of an extension, he hacked the extension developer's site. I was like, I'm going to kill him if he touched it. And then, um, but apparently what happened is they were just changing DNS and they transposed our two accounts. And then at the same time, was like I called him, he was like, I had an awful day today. I'm like, so did I. He's like, yeah, my DNS wouldn't propagate at all. I couldn't get my application board. I'm like, yeah, because mine was going to you. <laughs> um, so that was my uh, funny security thing. But of course, my client's freaking out, thinking that's like some major thing. And if it was, if I didn't know the guy, it would, I'd probably get a lot more worried about it. But um, so th there was that. And then um, just trying to get HIPAA compliance, that alone is, was a pain in the ass. Um, I actually outsourced my forms for the application to a company called Formstack which is fully HIPAA and PCI compliant, if, um, and they have a Juno plugin that does that full um, SSH tunnels and all that stuff. So um, that's how I deal with uh, HIPAA. HIPAA is a, uh, a cloud access. Gary Brooks, who wasn't here, he was going to speak yesterday. Uh, we're, we, we're trying to build a similar platform to what we've done with Rackspace and integrated Secure Live. So he's in a little different model, so it's going to take us a little while to get that together. But we want I love the one click, you know, you got a site, right. there's some neat things about it. But there's some limitations with that, but there's limitations with any configuration that you put together. Really. Um, so we just want to have some alternative. But one of the big things that, that Gary talked about was uh, they've got a really good program for, for HIPAA compliance. So uh, if you have some intense, uh, you know, security requirements for e-commerce, um, talk to Gary. Go over to Cloud Access. They've, they've got some really uh, well. Come find us after. You know, once we get ours up. But yeah, Gary's got some good uh, some some good solutions for that over there. So, any other stories? That one, the most hilariously sad hacking attempt that I've ever had to deal with. Um, hilarious and sad. Um, it was for a very small nonprofit. And I tried to log into the site one day and discovered my Joomla log had been changed. So I was like, oh crap. And I went into the database and reset it, changed all the passwords and our security suite and updated everything and I thought it was fine. And then it happened again. And then I was like, wait, oh shoot. And so I ran like another sweep and everything was clean. 
And so eventually what I did is I traced the IP that had been used to go in and change all the passwords. And I shared all this information with the board of the nonprofit, and they were like, somewhere in Ohio, Mason, that's where the president of our board lives. And what had happened was they were fighting, like the president and the board members. Yep. <laughs> and so the president decided the best thing to do would be to act like a five-year-old. And change, change all the passwords. Oh, the passwords on the site. Disgruntled site. employees uh -huh. and... Once we figured that out, yeah. she was quickly dismissed. But it was like, how did this site get hacked? <laughs> One of the things, I had a customer that was being a total pain in the rear. Changes and just, just a, he's a good friend, but uh, it was a real pain. So I, I put in a little JavaScript. <coughs> Kind of related to security in that you can put JavaScript in and push a button and do anything. But I, it, would, it didn't do anything, but I just put up so when he went to the particular page, the end of the review was, you were about to erase your entire hard drive. And I just said, okay, button. That's it. <laughs> no closing. You know, just, okay. Uh, any other stories? Questions? We had uh, called, I got called in to work on the site. Uh, clients said that went down and, and they couldn't figure it out. They ran a security sweep, couldn't find anything. Turns out that the previous designer, the developer, that they fired because he took forever and everything fired him, he put in a um, thing where it would call back to his site and if you know he didn't update the certificate, the, the maintenance thing, uh, it would shut the site down. And he encrypted several files to do this. <laughs> and so it's like it took a while to find it because you know you don't look for um, the encrypted files. It takes, well, that's where you know the security scanning is big. Is big. I really like the tool in Secure Lab, but I think this, uh, the, other, the other tools that you've been playing with, they have them as well. Um, yeah, OSC Security Suite has an excellent scanner. Um, it doesn't do a lot. It you have to do like definition updates, similar to like the software. So it doesn't have like a live center like Secure Live does, which is why I'm trying to you know, just test them side by side. But I'm happy with it. The only thing is the pain of the ass to install. Because it's, uh, they have a Joomla version, but you really want the server level one. Yeah. That installs into the PHP. And it runs off just a Joomla 2.5 you know, um, fork that they made. And, um, yeah. It, and you, you know why you want the server version versus just like a Joomla version? Because Secure Live has that too. We put that on uh, my Puget Sound. Uh, they're hosted on another environment, and I wanted to thought, oh well, it'll be okay for them because they they have uh, uh, you know they're they're going to be on their own environment. They can go and use the control panel through the admin area, right? Um, the problem is, is we integrated a wiki. And with the wiki, or you, if you were doing anything with like Magento or some other things with, with a, what they call a bridge. In other words, if they sign into Joomla, they get into the wiki or they get into whatever other tool. Uh, so they, the user doesn't have to log in. With that bridge, that's actually bridging into another application that isn't necessarily in the root of Joomla. So you have your domain, and you have the root of Joomla, and then you have maybe this other application, and it's associated with it for database. Well, because it's not in the uh, root of Joomla, it's not covered. It's not being protected. So it's probably the same kind of thing. because yeah. it, 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 So the server edition really covers all of the PHP. And, and that's what you want to be thinking about. <laughs> What do you what do you pay the if you get hacked? Well, the what do you pay if you time. if somebody loses all of, you know personal information? Oh yeah, I'm not fine. So totally. Fine. Sorry. Right. You know, yeah, I'm just saying this. <laughs> I mean, a small business, you know, the twenty dollars a month is fine, but you know, my HIPAA application, yeah, definitely. I'm sorry, I missed what you were talking about. The, what was the product? But, well, yes. What was the product? Oh, OSC Open Source Excellent Security Suite. They. Uh, it's a paid product. It's works out to be about 120 a year. So not that much different than the basic of Secure Live. I've been using it for years, and I just uh, recently discovered the Secure Live. So you can find it over here. Source And there's a good free product um, called JHackGuard by Cypher. Okay. Uh, Tan, tell me about 
Tom was telling me a story about um, he had a stockbroker, kind of a pretty popular, well-to-do uh, customer, who was having all kinds of troubles with his his portal, and um, you know, and Tom had said, "We'll do all this, this, and this, and this, and passwords, and all those kinds of things." He went and did all those things, and. Um, and the guy said, I'm still, I'm still having these problems. Um, people are still getting into X, Y, Z. And uh, it, it, it came down to a, a, a virus on his, you know, it tracked down to a virus on his computer that gave away his FTP passwords because he managed his site from his, from his laptop. And uh, so he didn't know about it, didn't know that that was going out, and that's how they were getting in. And so it came down. Any other questions? Has anybody used, uh, <coughs> excuse me, RS Firewall? Uh, has anyone else used that? Uh, I played around with it once. I think that's just me. Are there any other uh, free scanners out there or um, RS Firewalls that you paid one? Uh, I don't have any other free scanners. Or a cheap scanner, like, because uh, um, JHacker is not a scanner, it's just a blocker. Um, GoDaddy actually has a two dollar a month website protection scanner that is half decent, um, and it's good. I, I, I use it for um, when I take over a site just to give me a basic <coughs> on where it's at before I touch it. So, and it scans daily because you have a little seal. So, it goes into the PHP version and all that. And actually, cool. we, we use that on some of our sites, but it's really just kind of the most basic <coughs> thing where. You're just making it so script kiddies can't get to the admin panel and I don't know try to brute force I guess. But besides that, it's not it's not really that much for security. The RS the RS firewall. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and we do a um, Mac to secure scanning on our server. That's that. And that's that's a little pricey, but. I have a question. A uh, client came to me and said my network has been hacked and I can't I can't get it back up. And I went to the URL and it has Google's malicious warning. If you go any further, and I said, well, did some did you get a notice that there was a hack or when did this start? And he said, I think um, some other of my competition kept going there and reporting it as a malicious website. That's not how Google works. Man. Does it's Google? Automated. That's that's automated. Okay. Google actually looks for malicious code and looks for um, inroads. I had a client two weeks ago. They were contacted by the RSA out of uh, New York because um, Citibank was letting them sue her because she was a phishing site and she didn't even know it. Um, it was like an old client that they done from three years ago. They're like, no, I don't want to pay for updates. And WordPress of three years ago, you know, they got to do it. And uh, yeah, it, uh, she, they reported it because they're an accredited agency, but I can't report a site to Google just because I want to. Most of it's automated. And then you can uh, go into Google Webmaster Tools, report a, a clean scan, and then they'll go back in 48 hours and remove that. It took a while to get rid of it. I mean, I basically didn't yeah. even use the same server area, put them on a different, yeah. and redid there, it. And it took them a while to but, take it but off. Did you go into Google Webmaster Tools and authenticate mm -hmm. the account and request? Yeah, it just seems strange. He, he claimed it was competitors that crashed his site, and I didn't know if you could just report a site as malicious. You, you so can it's just Google. Do that, but all it really does is tell Google, hey, just send us a bite over there and scan it. Yeah. Okay. We did a thing where we set up um, a bunch of subdomains under a, a main domain, and we had this, um, these landing pages set up. And each one of these landing pages, we created a form in an iframe. And I wanted it to stay on the same page. You know, we want, yeah, the good thing about landing page, or what you want to do with a landing page, is you want to say, call me, email me, or click here, <laughs> or fill out the form. So you really want to give them three or four options, if, if that. And, um, and, and so we had an iframe, and then we had this form, and it connected with, an, with, a, with a CRM. So it went over to you know, save the data in, in, in the CRM, and follow up with leads, and chart it. Well, uh, this was quite a while ago, but Google didn't like the iframe. So all of a sudden, <coughs> because they were all in subdomains, and we had the and we had this iframe in there, they did the same thing. It took us 48 hours. I fired the guy that was working out. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly so. Because I went on vacation and came back to that. That was really nice. 
Any other stories, comments, suggestions about web security? The only last thing is just be careful with your extensions. Um, there was a client they brought me in. They uh, they found a pretty popular extension. It wasn't on Jet, but it's pretty popular in blog RSS feeds. Yep. So they installed it, and I looked in their source code, and there were 600 lines declaring that America was going to burn in hell, and you know, um, Allah is you know the best thing ever. And I like I called the guy, and I'm like, did you install this? Yeah. I'm like, look at line like eight, you know, 897. He's like, yeah, so, I'm like, you knowingly install a uh, terrorist group's extension? Well, it's a good extension. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's coming to the webinar on Thursday? Okay. Who wants a book? <laughs> Who wants a book that's not coming to the webinar? <laughs> oh, yeah, nice right, try. Good. <laughs> really good. All right. Uh, I don't know. What's the fairest way to do this? Who asked the most? All right. Let's take a vote. Who asked the most awesome questions? You did. I got from. Yeah, I got from. You're you're coming to the webinar. Web webinar. Okay. Well, actually, wait. Yeah. Let me do this for the, somebody that's not coming to the webinar. You can't make it next Thursday. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys. Is that fair? If you come to the webinar when you sign up. When you sign up uh, for it, and I can just make sure you get the information from me. You can go to JumlaDesignServices.com, click on webinars, and the registration is right there. Just mention to me somehow in a comment or somewhere that you from Joomla Day Chicago. I will mail you a copy of this book, direct, probably directly from Amazon. I just need your email address, which I'll have. And uh, the only plus about these two is they have to be running around by Tom Canavan. So here you go. Thank you for attending. I hope this was enlightening to everybody. It was great. Thank you.